Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your favor. We thank you for your blessing. We thank you for the outpouring. We thank you for everything you are doing. And we're asking, O oh Lord, that even this time again, you speak to your favored servants in Jesus' name. Bless everyone as you have promised to do. And we pray that we'll carry your blessing out of here and reach the world waiting for us in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can see that we're coming to the promise and the power of the excelling Christ. Ephesians chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 14. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14. It tells us in this epistle how Christ is exalted. How Christ is the excellent one. And the promise he gives unto us. And the power he injects into every life. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that he being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breath and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that she might be filled with all the fullness of God that's going to be an experience as Christ leads you according to his promise that you are filled with all the fullness of God now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that walketh where in us unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages world without end amen, amen. chapter 4 Ephesians chapter 4 Reading from verse 7. You remember we're talking about the promise and the power of the excelling Christ. And here we're told in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 7. But unto every one of us, no exception. Unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he says, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, and he gave gifts unto men. And he gave gifts unto me. And he gave gifts unto, unto men, everyone, you included. Now that he ascended, what is it? But that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also that ascended afar above all heavens that he might feel all things. And he gave some apostles, you receive your own, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and teachers, why? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Until when? Because there are many people that think 
Yes, he gave those before us. Those in the early centuries of the church. He gave them apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. And he said, it ended at that time. It ended with the first century. But look at this. I'm reading from verse 12 again to connect with verse 13. For the perfecting of the saints. The saints are not all perfected yet. And for the work of the ministry, the work of the ministry still continues. And for the defining of the body of Christ. The body of Christ still needs edification today. Actually, he gave the gifts until, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. is going to bring every one of us in unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That's the promise he has for us. And that is the power he wants to manifest in us. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1 verse 19. For it pleased the Father that in him, in Christ, shall all fullness dwell. And have you made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself he reconciles all people who come all people who repent all people who believe all people who continue he reconciles us to himself by him I say whether there be things in earth or things in heaven and you that was sometime in the past alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works yet now as he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you how is he going to present you to present you tell me out aloud holy unblameable and unreprovable in his sight that's what he wants to do that's the process going on now that's what he's effecting and accomplishing in your life in your heart in your spirit in your soul in your body in your language in your character in your behavior in your interactions he'll present you holy unblameable unreprovable in his sight if he continue thank God we're going to continue somebody there you will continue you will not die halfway you will not stop halfway you will not crumble halfway and you will not fail and fall halfway I will continue I know it for myself, I will continue. By his grace, I will continue. In his strength, I will continue. With the teaching of the word, I will continue. With the partnership with Christ and the pouring of the Holy Ghost, I will continue. You'll continue in Jesus' name. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away, from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven whereof I Paul a made a minister verse 27 to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles which is Christ in you the hope of glory christ in the believer abiding in the believer walking in the believer enlightening the believer moving the believer into ministry and into every part area of life it says it's christ in you the hope of glory 
that glorious place, destiny, by the grace of God, we will be there. The promise and the power of the excelling Christ. Three parts were breaking the message to number one. The promise of fullness by the excelling Christ. He has promised us not just a trickle. He has promised us not just a drop. He has promised us not just a taste of the goodness of God, of the grace of God, of the glory of God. He has promised us the fullness, the promise of fullness by the excelling Christ. Number two, the power for fruitfulness. Do you know you are going to be more fruitful than the past? I said, do you know? Do you trust? Do you believe? Do you know that you know without a shadow of doubt? You'll be more fruitful than ever before in your life in Jesus' name. The power for fruitfulness from the excelling of Christ. He gives us the power to bear fruit and to bear fruit more abundantly. And he says, our fruit will abide. Your fruit will remain in Jesus' name. Number three, our partnership and faithfulness to the excelling of Christ. Our partnership and faithfulness to the excelling of Christ. Number one, what's number one with you there? The promise of fullness by the excelling Christ. I want you to look at the promise very closely. Understand the promise very clearly and see what you're expecting and see what you're believing and see what Christ says he will do is the promise of the fullness. We're looking at Matthew chapter 5 verse 6. Matthew chapter 5 verse 6. It says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst at righteousness, for they shall be filled. He's talking about the people that have a strong desire. You see, there are many people in the visible church. There are many people that will claim to be members of the church of God, the church of Christ, the church of the firstborn, the church, the ecclesia, the people who are called out, called out of the world to come into the kingdom of God. But, you know, they don't have any desire for righteousness. They have desire for bread and butter. They have desire for healing. They have desire for material things. They have desire for the things of the world. When it comes to righteousness, they do not have the desire, the passion, the hunger, and the thirst. But Jesus said in his promise, he says, Blessed, happy, favored are they who do thirst and hunger after righteousness. He's talking about the people that feel dry. They feel they don't have enough of that righteousness flowing and dropping from Calvary. They do not have that righteousness that Christ himself has given, that he has provided. They do not have the righteousness that God will see that this is the righteousness made in heaven and it flows into their hearts. It says the people that are conscious of their lack, of their need, that they do not have this righteousness or they have it, it's at the low ebb. It's at the bottom of the bucket. It's at the bottom of their soul. But they want to be filled, saturated, and full of that righteousness. It says, blessed are they because they thirst, because they hunger after righteousness. And the promise is, there's a promise coming from Christ. They shall be filled. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. And you try to understand that word field if you have a bottle 
and then you pour water inside until it is full and there is no other drop that can enter it says they shall be filled it means with that same material that bucket that glass that cup that pail is filled with that material there's no other thing when you're filled filled without any other thing that is opposite righteousness on this side field on that side field your soul field your heart field your spirit field your language field your attitude field righteousness just righteousness that's the promise he has given us that he will so fill us there'll be no room for any other sin different from righteousness you'll be filled in jesus name and then in chapter 6 now i'm reading from verse 33 chapter 6 we're looking at verse 33 it says but seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness you see the condition there there are many people that are seeking many things but they don't put forth the kingdom of god they might seek a wife first that's not the kingdom they might seek children first that's not the kingdom they might seek certificate first that's not the kingdom they might seek material things first that's not the kingdom they might seek personal progress promotion first that's not the kingdom he says but seek ye first seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness seek the kingdom of god how about that? Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. Make sure that you are born again. Sealed. Guaranteed. Done. Final. Evident. We can see you sought the kingdom of God. It says after that, don't stop there, don't stop there. And his righteousness not your own righteousness not self-righteousness not superficial righteousness not righteousness that is pretended he is righteousness and then he says and all these things shall be added unto you addition will come multiplication will come but first of all first of all the promise of the fullness of righteousness thank god today is your day John chapter 1, John chapter 1, whenever God gives anything, you know, God is not stingy with his grace. He's not stingy with his righteousness. When he wants to give, he gives. And when you come and you say, Lord, I depend upon you. I'm looking at Calvary. I'm looking to Calvary. And I know that Jesus paid it all. He paid for my salvation. He paid for the righteousness. He paid for the holiness. He paid for the infilling of the glory and the grace and the virtues of heaven. And when you pray like that, it doesn't just give you a drop. It doesn't give you just something little. It fills you up. John chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 14. It says, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld this glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Full of grace and truth. The fullness of the grace of God is coming your way today. The fullness of the truth of God is coming your way today. It says it's full of grace and truth. And then in verse 16 of his fullness. Have we all received grace for grace? Grace for grace. You've got grace before, you are getting more grace today. You've got saving grace, you are going to get sanctifying grace today. You've got sanctifying grace, you are going to get sustaining grace in Jesus' name. Abundant grace. Sufficient grace for every need of your life and for every spiritual challenge of your life, you are going to get in Jesus' name. Of his fullness, of his fullness, of his fullness, have we all received grace for grace? It's coming. I said it's coming. You know what he spoke about? Number one, fullness of righteousness. 
you are going to have that. The fullness of grace, you are going to have that. The amens have faded away. John chapter 16. In John chapter 16, here we're reading from verse 23. John chapter 16, verse 23. And in that day you shall ask me nothing. What he means is you will not ask him directly. You are going to ask the Father in his name. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever, 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 that check is unlimited. I said the check is unlimited. Because he says, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. If you're asking for the fullness of righteousness today, you're going to have it in Jesus' name. And you're asking for the fullness of the grace of God today, you're going to have in Jesus' name. The fullness of power, that you're filled with his power until there is no weakness around, anywhere in your heart, anywhere in your life, and you're always courageous and bold and powerful as you move on to ministry, you are that person, you are the candidate for that, you are going to have it today in Jesus' name. Because whatsoever, whatsoever, he shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. He that so have ye asked nothing in my name, ask and ye shall receive. Somebody there is going to receive today. Ask and ye shall receive. How can you be poor spiritually? How can you be lacking spiritually? How can you be anemic? How can you be spineless? How can you be a person without a backbone? How can you live without courage? How can you live without power? How can you live with all the provision of heaven? When he says, ask and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. That your joy may be full. If your joy has been up and down, low and high and then fading and coming from today your joy will flow like a river yeah. happiness will flow like a river yeah. sadness gone sorrow gone yeah. tears gone even in the at the crossroad at the most challenging time your joy will be full in jesus name and look at uh, chapter 14 uh, of John. John chapter 14, uh, we're looking at the promise of fullness by the excelling of Christ. The promise of fullness by the excelling Christ. It tells us in chapter 14 verse 12, it says, Verily, verily, now, anytime Jesus said verily, verily, what he means is nothing can change this one. He said, even as if heaven and earth may pass away, the sky and the ocean may pass away, but this one will not pass away. It might appear to you the way you feel, as if maybe this will not be done. No, there's a very late here. Very late, very late. Assuredly, I say unto you, he that believes in me, on me, are there believers at home today? I said, are there believers at home today? Well, look at this. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do also. He preached, you are going to preach. I said he preached, you are going to preach. He wants souls into the kingdom, you are going to win souls into the kingdom. He sought for the lost, you are going to seek the lost in Jesus' name. He brought them in. He brought them in. You'll bring them in in Jesus' name. He prayed and you are going to pray. The Father answered his prayer. The Father is going to answer your prayer. He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall do also. And greater works than this shall lead you. Because I go unto the Father. Greater things are coming. Verse 13. And whatsoever. And whatsoever, and whatsoever, ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye ask anything in my name, tell me, if ye ask anything in my name, didn't, are you not sure? If ye ask anything in my name, 
I will do it. Fulfillment has come in your life. There's no way, there's no way, there's no way you can escape the miracle working power of God in your life this year in Jesus' name. Only to ask, only to ask, only to ask for the fullness of the grace of God. For the fullness of righteousness in your life. For the fullness. You want to be as holy as a child of God can be. And you are asking the Lord. And you are saying, Lord, this year, holiness. Somebody help me. Holiness. Somebody help me. Holiness. You are going to have it to the full in Jesus' name. If he ask anything, anything in my name, I will do it. And then he tells us in verse 15, If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father. And he shall give you another comforter, just another comforter like me, that ye may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth he him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and he shall be in you to the full. He'll fill you up. I said he'll fill you up. Romans chapter 8, the promise of fullness by the excelling Christ. Romans chapter 8, verse 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. But delivered him up. Tell me. But delivered him up for. Look at him on the cross. Delivered for you. Hanging there for you. Bearing your punishment which you will never bear anymore. Bearing your guilt which you will never bear anymore. Bury your condemnation, which you will never bear anymore. Because he did that for you. Say, he did that for me. He did that for me. He did that for me. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for you, for me, for us all. How shall he not with him also, also, tell me, also, what do I pay? Also, what do I have to give? Also, how much money will it cost? Also, how many self and dinner will it cost? Also, also give us all things. That's the promise of the Lord. And as you believe that, it's going to happen in your life. Colossians chapter 2. In Colossians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 9. Colossians chapter 2, we're reading from verse 9. It says in verse 9, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily in Christ. In Christ, that's our Savior. In Christ, that's our Sanctifier. In Christ, that's the one that gave himself for us. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Verse 10. Help me read it out. One, two, three, go. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for yourself. Praise the Lord for your opportunity. Praise the Lord for the possibilities of Christ in you. And ye are complete in him. Complete. Complete. Spiritually, you'll be complete. Family, you'll be complete. In your body, you'll be complete. As a man, as a woman, you'll be complete. As a pastor, as a preacher, you'll be complete. As a worker, as a servant of God, you'll be completely equipped in Jesus' name. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Well, if you are complete, all you need to ask now, look around in your life and see a vacant area there. 
a deprived area there, a poor area there, an ineffective area there, any area that is vacant of the power of God. You say, Lord, fill me up. Fill me up. Fill me up. I thought you'd say it instead of just say amen. Fill me up. Fill me up. Every place that has a place to be filled will be filled in your life today in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 21. In Matthew chapter 21, reading from verse 21, Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is not to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, it shall be done. It shall be done. And all things, how many things? And all things whatsoever, ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. Because he says all things whatsoever, ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. Point number two, the power for fruitfulness from the excelling Christ. The power for fruitfulness from the excelling Christ. As Christ called his soon disciples, he didn't leave them to just follow him. He said, I'll make you fishers of men. And then he began to manifest the fulfillment of that promise by giving them power. He will not leave you powerless. He will give you power. That's what he promised as to connect with him, associate with him, and follow him. And you're willing to do everything he has called you to do. He promised power. He promised the people that went before us. And he gave them. He has promised us he's going to give us. Matthew chapter 10. Reading from verse 1. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them, shout it out, power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. When he called his disciples, Let's face the fact now. We're disciples. And disciples have not changed. And we're disciples of Christ. And Christ has not changed. His love has not changed. His generosity has not changed. His grace has not changed. His desire has not changed. He wanted them successful. He wants you to succeed in the work of the Lord. He gave them, he's giving us. He gave them, he's giving us. I said he gave them, and he's giving us. How many of the disciples did he give? All of them. Has he changed? I said, has he changed? How many disciples will he give power today? All. Oh, now look up for a moment. If all of us here, if all of us over there, here in this same world, if he gives us this power, like he gives you a hand, gives you two hands, and gives me two hands, gives him two hands, and gives her two hands, and when I need to carry something, I'm not asking for him to come and carry. I have my two hands. He gives you a hand to write. He gives me a hand to write. And when you want to write something, you're not looking for him or for her. Specially gifted, specially talented to come and help you write. The same thing, he has given us power. He has given me power. He has given me power 
How come you never use your pen and you want me to do the writing, all the writing for you? How come you don't use your mouth? You want me to do all the speaking for you? How come you don't use your power? You want me to manifest all the power for you? How come your child has a problem and the power is there? I said the power is there. I said the power is there. How come you just close your mouth and you fold your hand and you look at your child's suffering when you could have manifested the power? The dawn of a new beginning. I said the dawn of a new beginning. That power he has given unto you, you will use it in Jesus' name. And when he had called his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out, not to take them in. You'll not take in any evil spirit. Cast them out. Cast them out. And to heal, tell me, all manner of sickness and all manner of disease, you will do it in Jesus' name. And then he tells us in verse 6, and go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As she go, tell me, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Freely ye have received. Freely give. Freely ye have received. Freely give. Look up here for a moment. We're doing publicity for this retreat. Let's say, for example, in a particular group, they printed, they have had all these, uh, you know, publicity garbage. And they looked at all the numbers of the people in the group. And uh, our leaders contributed money together in that group. And they bought sufficient for everyone. You were not around when they made the announcement, the publicity garment is available for everyone. A member of this a group is in such and such a place, go and collect yours. Any color you want, blue, yellow, red, whatever. And then others went to collect. You were not there when they made the announcement. And now you just saw your friend is wearing the publicity garb. And you said, this is beautiful. Where did you get it? It's free. It's free. It's in such and such a place. And then you didn't go there. And you are wearing um, what kind of, would I say, civilian dress? Or what are you wearing? Something very different. And see this one. You see that one? Colorful. And you are the only one different. And they are all telling you, it's free. It's free. Go and get your own. And you didn't get your own. What am I saying? I'm looking at verse 8. Heal the sick. Heal the sick. Heal the sea. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Tell me. Freely ye have received. Freely give. Is free the colorful dress of our power? Is free the colorful dress of walking miracle? It is free the colorful dress of healing the sick. Casting out devils, raising the dead, cleansing the lepers is free. Come and get your own. I say, come and get your own. That's the reason the thing is not going around because, you know, some people are saying, oh me, oh me, I don't have, I don't have. Those who are saying amen, let us say amen very well. <laughs> Brothers, you'll get your own. Sisters, you'll get your own. I can hardly hear the voice of my daughters there. But Mark chapter 3. In Mark chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 14, and you're doing 12, that they should be with him, and that he might send them forth to preach, 
and to have power to heal sicknesses to have power that's why he called them and then it says and to cast out devils the time has come we're looking at luke chapter 9 luke chapter 9 i'm reading from verse 1 luke chapter 9 reading from verse 1 and when he called his 12 disciples together he said we have it before yes i know you heard it before you are going to hear it again on your until you have it i said you'll be hearing it until you have it and then he called his 12 disciples together and he gave them and he gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases power and what power and what authority what's the difference between those two words you see there are things we carry with power there are things we take up with power there are things we push with power the things were dry with power. Other things that power cannot push, that power cannot pull, we do that with authority. What does that mean? Look at that lorry coming on the highway. And look at somebody in uniform. That uniform is the authority. And all those drivers know that those people on the road with uniform, that they have authority because they are sent there by the government. And then that person might be a man, might be a woman, might be tall, might be average, might look big, might look moderate. He steps on the road and puts up the hand. What kind of hand is that? I say, what kind of hand is that? The hand of authority. And that man driving the car, driving the, the truck, will have to stop. That's authority. That person that stood on the road does not have power to stop that vehicle or to stop that lorry, but has authority. But at other times, that's a chair to be taken. From here to here, you don't need to use authority for that, to have power for that. You carry that one and carry it there. What Jesus is telling us is this. There are things requiring power. He has given you power to do that. There are things requiring authority. That that demon, the flood of enemies, as they are rushing, you stretch up the hand. What kind of hand? of authority and you open your mouth and you say stop it has to stop yeah. i said it has to stop yeah. but you know you just joined the police force you just got your uniform you put on the uniform the authority is there but you have never stood on the road and you have never stretched out your hand and you see a lorry coming, and you know you ought to stop that lorry. And instead of understanding, reckoning on your uniform, you are reckoning on yourself. Hmm. What do I think I am? What if I go there and I stretch up my hand? What if that man, instead of looking at my uniform, looks at me and says, Who are you? Get out of the road. What am I going to do? And then you never use your authority. That's what happened last year. That's what happened year before. That's what happened since you became a Christian. And you will look at your uniform. You are wearing the uniform of the government of heaven. And when you say stop, that thing has to stop. I said that thing has to stop. Do it. Try it. You'll be surprised. God will surprise you with a miracle. Luke chapter 10. 
In Luke chapter 10, reading from verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power. He has not given you weakness. I said he has not given you weakness. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Verse 20, notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Rejoice because, tell me, you know there are people that say you can never be sure you'll get to heaven you can never be sure you're saved you can never be sure that you're a real child of god look at all these people 70 of them jesus assured them he said your names are written in the book of life in heaven your names are there god knows you he knows your name he knew the day you were saved. He knew the day he wrote your name. That's why the Spirit of God came to be a witness in your heart. That you are a child of God. Somebody there, I'm a child of God. Somebody there, my name is written in heaven. Somebody there, I rejoice because I'm born again. Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24, I'm reading from verse 49. And behold, I set the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. That word endued means to be enveloped. It means to put a blanket around you, the blanket of power. It means to surround you, to overwhelm you, and to cover you up with the power of heaven. That's what you have. Act like you know you have it. Behave like you know you have it. Be confident like you know you have it. Power from on high. Acts chapter 1, the power for fruitfulness, you will bear fruit. You will bear fruit. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, you're going on the way and they say, show me your particulars, show me your particulars. If you don't have particulars and then you have been behind the wheel, you'll be trembling. But if you have the particulars, just bring everything out to see. Look at that. My name is there. My picture is there. And all the numbers you want to look at, they are there. And now, there's going to be, show me your convert. Show me your fruit. Show me your success. Show me your fruit. Ah, you don't have particulars. Why are you driving when you don't have particulars? Why are you here when you don't intend to have any fruit? My fruit is going to abide. I said my fruit is going to abide. And then who knows? I might, I might come across you. I'll say good morning brother, good morning sister, and good morning pastor. Show me your convert. You are going to have converts. You are going to have fruits in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 But ye shall receive power After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you Ye shall receive power After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you And ye shall be witnesses unto me Both in Jerusalem and in all Judea And in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth even in the uttermost part of the earth you have power to bear fruit you are going to bear fruit in jesus name i said you will bear fruit in jesus name in john chapter 15 john chapter 15 i'm reading here from verse 16 john chapter 15 verse 16 ye have not chosen me but i have chosen you and ordained you are you chosen? 
Are you ordained? Yeah. I said, are you chosen? Yeah. And are you ordained by the Lord? Yeah. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. And that your fruit should remain. Your fruit will not backslide. Your fruit will not die off. Your fruit will not wither away. Your fruit will not stray away to another fold. Your fruit will abide and remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Point number three now, the partnership and faithfulness to the excelling Christ. Partnership with Christ. Partnership with Christ. He is the one that calls us to partnership. And what a wonderful thing to be. Partner with him that cannot fail. It tells us in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, I will go. Go ye therefore, I will go. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. Do you believe that? I am with you always is in partnership with us. And he says he's with us always, even unto the end of the world. And somebody shout. You must remember his name in Matthew chapter 1. Remember his name, Matthew chapter 1. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, Behold, a virgin shall be with child. And shall bring forth his son, and thou shalt call his name, tell me, Emmanuel, which means interpreted is God with us. That's our partnership with him. He's going to walk with you, he's going to abide with you. You need strength, it's there, he'll give you strength. Understanding is there, he'll give you understanding. And you need courage, is there? It will give you courage. You need insight, enlightenment, is there? It will give you all you need to bear fruit in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Go into all the world. Have you noticed something? He never spoke to the world. To Go ye into all the church, all the churches. But he spoke to those in the church. Your worship to get strength, power, understanding, and to understand your responsibility. You don't stay there in the church location all your life. You come, you're empowered, you're enlightened, you're energized, then you go into the world. And then after walking for some time, you need more power, more encouragement, more freshness. You come. And as you come, you're energized again. You're refreshed again. Then you go. And as you walk and walk and walk, and because you expend spiritual energy, and you're likely to be tired and weary, drained because of the work and because of the labor of the day, you come again. Maybe a conference, maybe a camp, maybe a retreat, maybe a congress, maybe a Monday Bible study, maybe a Sunday worship. You come and then you go again. You come for the purpose so that you can be prepared to go. You will go. What do you think of the people that come to the congress? They never go. The purpose is defeated. They come to the Bible study. They never go into the world to preach the gospel. The purpose is defeated. They come. They have strength. They have understanding. They have spiritual food. 
They have energy. They have vision. They never go. The purpose is defeated. We come to receive so we can go out to give. Your coming will be purposeful. Yeah. Verse 15, and he said unto them, Go ye to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth, those who hear you will believe. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them. Follow them that believe. Have you noticed that you know somebody who is just standing still? Nothing follows him. Even his own shadow doesn't follow him. Because you can only follow. The word follow is a dynamic word. It's a, it's a word of motion. And it can only, something can only follow you. Somebody can only follow you. When you are moving, you will move. You will work. You go out there. And as you go out there and you are believing, the signs and the wonders and the miracles will follow you in Jesus' name. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. In my name, they shall cast out devils. Now understand, devils know the name. Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. And Paul, I know. If you go in that name, they recognize that name, they will come out. That sickness will come out. You see, the sickness, the disease, they don't know your name. They don't recognize your name. Your name by itself means nothing to them. But the name of Jesus, the one who died at Calvary, and the one who bore the stripes, and by stripes were healed, they know that name. In my name, they'll cast out devils. I said they'll cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall speak with new tongues. You don't put new wine into old bottle. Otherwise, the bottle will be broken. And then the wine will be wasted. But you put new wine into new bottle. You don't mix the new tongue with the old language. Old language. I'm tired. I'm not the only one. I don't think I can go again. If they want, let them come and take their work. This is all I can do. I cannot do more than this. I've been telling them. I told them last year. I cannot do this thing. Let them look for an alternative. I don't mind. Let somebody take my place. No more old language. I said no more old language. Let the weak say. Let the sick say. Let the poor say. You're not tired. You're not weak. You're not weary. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. They'll throw them away. If they drink any deadly thing, they talking about accidental drinking. Not you need purpose to do that. It shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick. Any hands available there? Any hands available there? You know, the hands there are even more than those who are sick around in your community. Go search them out. I said, go search them out. I said, go search them out. Your hands be anointed in Jesus' name. The power like electricity surge through those hands. And when you lay those hands on the sick, they will recover in Jesus' name. Don't waste electricity. Don't waste power. Don't waste anointing. Somebody is sick in the district. Somebody is sick in the neighborhood. Somebody is sick in that house. 
knock on doors, knock on doors. And they open the door and, uh, you know, they say, what are you looking for? I'm looking for the sick. Jesus sent me to come and heal the sick who are here. Oh, they say, come on in, come on in. There's a mama there who is sick. There's a boy there who is sick. And then you say, you come. In whose name do you come? In the name of Jesus. You lay those hands on them. What will happen? It will get you. You know, if we're going to obey the Lord, thank God I see obedient people here today. I'm looking for them. Obedient people here today. Obedient people here today. You will lay those hands on the sick and they shall they recover in Jesus' name. We can have thousands of, thousands of miracles in one week. I said we can have thousands of miracles in one week. And as they are healed, they'll be converted as well. Look at verse 20. And they went forth. And they went forth. And they went forth. And preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them. And confirming the word. With signs following. Confirming the word. With signs following. Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever what he said before is saying unto you go and do what he told you to do you are going to get the result he assured you, you are going to get. Now, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Now, we're going to read two other verses before we come back to that verse 13. Look at verse 9. Verse 9, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me I didn't hear you. Paul the apostle said to the Philippian believers, because he was their father in the Lord, but me, me please, in all humility to say, those things which he have learned, have you learned something from me? And received, have you received anything from me? And heard, have you heard anything from me? Yeah. And seen in me? Do. Let me explain what that means. For example, you've heard, I teach Bible study. You've learned in that Bible study. And you have experienced the power of God as you have received in that Bible study. What you have seen in me, what you have learned of me, this Monday, take that outline and go do a personal Bible study. Look at that outline you are reaching. Readjust it to fit the need of a new person, of somebody who is not saved, of somebody who does not know much. And pick that house, pick that person, and say, can I share something with you? Can I tell you something? I discovered something. It blessed my life. 
I was so excited when I had this. I was thinking about you. And he says, what's it? It will take us a few minutes. Can you sit down? Do you have a Bible? I have a Bible. And then you share together what you have seen in me, what you have heard of me, what you have learned from me. That one person that week you sit down together don't worry to say i'll bring you to our church a pastor will teach a pastor is coming a pastor is this it's right in your hand you can do it i said you can do it and as you do that that's how you become a teacher and that's you're obeying the bible that's one verse i wanted to read to you those things which you have seen in me and you have learned of me and you have received of me and you have heard of me you have learned do did you see from that screen how i pray for the sick did you see that every thought weekend of the month and i say in jesus name i don't have to touch them it's not in my name it's in the name of jesus that name is in your mouth i said that name is in your mouth I did it, I did it start that when I was 10 years of age, 20 years of age, 30 years of age. I started that when I learned about the name of Jesus. Now you have known about the name of Jesus. What you have seen in me, what you have heard of me, what you have learned from me, go and do. And the Lord will prosper in your hand in Jesus' name. The other verse I want to read to you is verse 19. Verse 19. But my God shall supply all you need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. All the anointing you need, my God will supply all your need. All the boldness you need, my God shall supply all your need. All the enthusiasm you need, my God shall supply all you need. All the money you need to transport you there, my God shall supply all your need. All the joy you need, all the motivation you need, my God shall supply all you need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. From verse 9 to verse 19, we come to verse 13. I can do. Now I can do. I can do all things through Christ who is strengthening me. In the name of Jesus, be strong. The power of God upon your life. Anointing upon your life. Success following after you. Victory following after you. And the right word for the right person every time I should talk to them, they will come into the kingdom in Jesus' name. Arise and receive. Arise and receive. Arise and receive. I can do all things. I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You are strong today. You are not weak. You are strong today. You are not weak. You are strong today. You are not weak. The Lord will go with you.